how to build a gaming PC for under $1,000. Everything you see on the table here costs a total of $970.93, obviously at the time of recording this video. What we're doing is we're targeting a mid-range, budget-friendly gaming PC. This is targeting 1080p gaming for high to ultra settings with some optional 1440p games that can run at medium to high settings. It really depends on your game, but obviously you wanna take advantage of Nvidia's DLSS with this 4060. Now at the core of this gaming PC is gonna be our Micro Center bundle. This is a bundle of our CPU, our RAM, and our motherboard. Our CPU that we're using today is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X3D. This is a six core CPU with 12 threads and 96 megabytes of L3 cache. This is perfect for gaming. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which comes on two eight gigabyte sticks. This is DDR4 3200. We also have the ASUS Tough Gaming B550 motherboard. Now, all of this bundled together is going to be 299, which is an excellent deal for a bundle with all of this. For the GPU, we have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060. Now this has eight gigabytes of VRAM and this pairs perfectly with the 5600X 3D. Again, this is great for mid-range gaming, 1080p at high to ultra settings or some 1440p gaming as well. Now this RTX 4060 costs $319.99. For the SSD, we have a one terabyte NVMe M2. Now, this is gonna house our operating system and our games, and we got this for $44.99. To cool the CPU, we went with the Deepcool AG400. This is a single tower cooler that comes with one fan. We went with an air cooler instead of an AIO because air coolers can be more budget friendly. Now, this Deepcool we got was $25.99. For the power supply, we have a PowerSpec 750 watt semi-modular power supply. That means that the motherboard power and the CPU power are running directly out of the power supply, but the modular part is gonna be for the PCIe and your SATA power. Now this power spec 750 watt power supply runs for $79.99. So the case we're using to house this build is gonna be the Montec Air 903 Max. Now this has three fans in the front and one fan in the back. This is an open mesh design, so it's gonna be a very airy case. It's gonna keep your components nice and cool, but you wanna make sure you don't get any dust in there. Luckily, there is a mesh on the front and there's also this removable mesh on the top. We do have a mesh on the bottom by the power supply as well. This is a great case. It has a tempered glass right here so you can see all the RGB and the build inside. And you can get this case for $59.99. Now, the case, the cooler, and the power supply are all white as well as the GPU, but the motherboard and the RAM are gonna be black. The bundle only came in a black configuration, so we wanted to do a sort of Stormtrooper mix and match here. And the last thing we got was a fresh copy of Windows 11. That ran us $139.99. That brings our total to $970.93. So right under that $1,000 mark. Now that we have all the parts, let's get into the build. Okay, we are ready for our build. I've got everything prepared here on the table. Uh, so what we're gonna do first is we are going to assemble the components on the motherboard. We'll be putting the CPU, the SSD, and the RAM onto the motherboard. We're also gonna get the mounting bracket for the cooler on there as well. But first, we got this little anti-static bracelet. I've got it grounded to the table here. All right, there we go. Now I have a leash on. I feel like a dog. Okay, so I went ahead and I opened everything up. I've got everything laid out here on the table. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the motherboard ready. I've got the motherboard right here in this anti-static bag. So I'm gonna take this out. There's a lot of pins and connectors here on the back that you wanna make sure you do not damage. So you wanna make sure you don't put this on a hard surface like this wooden table. The easiest thing to work on is gonna be the box that the motherboard came in. It's nice and soft and you can set everything up right there. First thing first, we have the AM4 socket right here. So we've got our 5600X3D and we're gonna put it right here in the AM4 socket. Uh, now, AM4 CPUs have pins on them. So you have to be careful when you do your installation. There's a little triangle here in the corner and you can also see it on the back of the CPU, which indicates the orientation. There's another triangle here on the socket as well. So that'll help you make sure you're orienting it correctly. There's a little latch, you just raise that right up. Take the CPU, just put it right into the socket, make sure that it's flush, everything's good. And there we go, CPU's in place. 
Now we can move on to the SSD. The SSD uh, M2 mount is going to be under this heat sink here. I'm just going to use the screwdriver. There's two screws on the heat sink plate. So that's going to come right up. And there we go. All right, so that is where the M2 is going to mount. It connects right there. On the back of this heat sink, there's an adhesive here. This is a thermal pad. So when we put the heat sink in place, we can take off this little plastic cover, stick it on, and that'll help conduct the heat away from the SSD onto the heat sink. Here's the M2 connector. And then we have a bunch of different mounting options here for our SSD. Uh, the SSD we are using, this is a 2280, 22 millimeters by 80 millimeters. So we got to make sure that we put a mounting screw or a little standing. We're going to put a little riser here that this is going to attach into, and then the mounting screw will go into that riser. So riser and the screws came in the motherboard box. I've got them right here. So I'm just going to open this right up. All right. This is one of the best things in the world, by the way. This is a little magnetic bowl so you can keep all of your screws in place. There's going to be a lot of screws, so this is going to come in handy. Got the riser. I'm going to thread this right into the hole. We're going to go to the 2280 mark here. So now I've got the riser set. You can take your M2, goes right into the connector, just like that. It'll stick up at an angle so you can push it down. So we're going to be putting the screw right here. There we go. Screw that down into place. M2 is all set. It's in there nice and snug. I'm gonna take this adhesive off of the heat sink. Peels right off. So this is gonna stick right onto the M2. And there we go. Our SSD is installed and all set. Now we can move on to the RAM. The best tip I can give you when you're doing this, make sure you RTFM. Read the fantastic manual because this is a fantastic source of information, everything you need, especially the motherboard manual. So we're going to install the RAM. Now I wanted to double check with the manual first, but it looks like we've got our A1, A2, B1 and B2. So we have two sticks of RAM here. So we're gonna be running this in a dual channel configuration. So we wanna make sure that we actually have it in, it says A2 and B2, which is actually gonna be these gray slots here. So there's a little latch on the top. You can pop that up, pop that one up. This one's actually locked in place. And then you can see on the slot, little notch right in the center. This notch is actually off center. So there's only one direction that this can actually go in. So you wanna make sure that you're matching it up in the right way. So you're gonna take your RAM stick, you're gonna slide it right into the slot, a little bit of force and push it down. That's why I wanna do this on a soft surface because if you do that on a hard surface, you're gonna break your motherboard. So take your other stick of RAM, you're gonna take it, here's the notch, line up the notch, put it in the slots on the side and press down. All right, the RAM, the CPU and the SSD are all installed. Last thing we're gonna do before we get the case started is we are going to get the mounting bracket for the cooler installed. So this guy's gotta come out first. Four screws here, you wanna take this out. And that's number four. Cool. Now, again, every cooler is different. Every situation is different. Every configuration with components is gonna be different. So always check the manual. I've got the manual for the cooler here. Now we've got this bracket here. Now this works for Intel and AMD. It's got these little notches here for this AM4 socket, which is gonna match up. But we gotta put the risers first. So I've got these four little risers here that we're just gonna stick right on top. OK, 
Okay. It's gonna go on this way. You can see that these are the mounting points on the mounting bracket here. It's gonna match up to these mounting points on the cooler here. So that's gonna indicate the direction of the cooler. Obviously we want the air to come this way, go out that way. Bracket is on in the right direction. Now we got the four screws here, so we can just drop these in. All right, there we go. Now this is all set up, so when we put our cooler on, that'll be all ready. Some people put their cooler on now before they put the motherboard in the case. Um, I find this kind of cumbersome, to be honest. I would rather just put the motherboard in first, then put in the cooler. Ultimately, it's up to you, your preference, whatever you want to do. Another thing I like to do when I'm building is I like to keep my workstation clean, because as you can see, there's a lot of things and it gets cluttered very fast. Next thing you know, you put a screw somewhere, you can't find it, and you spend half your day looking for it, and it was in front of you the whole time. Okie dokie. I.O. plate. This is a big one. One important thing about this motherboard is that the I.O. plate actually comes separately. It is not pre-installed. So you gotta make sure that you get this in first, then you slide the motherboard in. You can't put this on after the motherboard is already installed in the case. Motherboard is ready. I'm gonna start working on the case next. All right, I'm gonna start with the front panel here. This is tempered glass. Oh, that's not what you want to do. All right, I'm going to start to get the case ready. I'm going to take this front panel off. Now this is tempered glass, so you want to be careful with it. There's two screws here on the back. These are thumb screws, so they come off pretty easy. This slides right out. I put my hand underneath to catch it just in case it falls. This is tempered glass. This will shatter if you hit it on the edge, especially if you do this on tile, do it on your floor. Don't do that. Do it on, I mean, this wood surface is okay. Obviously you wanna do it on a mat or some sort of soft surface to make sure that you don't break this tempered glass. I'm gonna put this somewhere safe, keep it aside for now. Like this chair. Chair is totally safe. All right, so the case has the fans pre-installed. So this is gonna make my life pretty easy. Let's go around to the back here. Two more thumb screws for the back panel. Comes off super easy. All right. So, all right, so this case has the power button, USB ports, some of your IO up here for the case. So this runs down here. And these are all the cables that we're gonna be plugging into the motherboard. The fans are already run to this little controller here. All right, so here we can see the built-in fan connector. You can see these are the uh, fan controllers for all four fans that are built in. This is the one for the back. These are the three on the front. Up here is the five volt ARGB. This is the addressable RGB, so it controls the color of the RGBs on the fan. So we have the three front fans that have RGB. Back fan actually does not have RGB. It just has a fan controller. And then the controller runs out from here straight to the motherboard. And this is the fan controller. This is the RGB. So we're gonna hook up this controller to the motherboard as well. Uh, and this is gonna run the fan speeds and it's also gonna run some of the RGB that comes on these fans. There's mounting points for SSDs and you can also put a 3.5 inch hard drive as well. We're not gonna be using those for now, but it's nice to have those options if you wanna upgrade your space later, that'll be made available to you. If you do decide that you wanna put extra hard drives that are gonna go on the back, like a 2.5 inch SSD, they do include some SATA data cables for you, so you can plug it into that, run it to your motherboard. I'm gonna keep this in the motherboard box for now and uh, save it for a future day. All right, so this case, they got a little box hidden away here, and this is gonna have all of our screws. They put that right in the enclosure and they kept it in the case. So if you ever open a case and you are looking for all the screws and everything that came with it, I guarantee it's somewhere. It's somewhere inside the case. All right, so we have our hard drive enclosure screws, set those aside. We have our SD mount screws for putting on the plates for the uh, SSDs, put that aside. Here we go. 
These are gonna be for the motherboard. And this came with a bunch of little zip ties. This is gonna be handy for cable management. There's a bunch of extra goodies in here that we don't need, so I'm gonna save these for later. All right, we are ready to get the motherboard in the case. First things first, there are nine standoffs on this. Here, here, and here. There's three rows. Now that's gonna match up on the motherboard. Motherboard's gonna go in like this. And there's the holes for the standoffs here. But first things first, IO plate. Let me get this in place. Got it in the right orientation, so that's all set. Yeah, cause if you don't do this first, you're uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to do this all over again. It snaps right in, and there we go. There's this little cable here for this fan. I'm gonna try to put this out of the way. Motherboard, we're gonna take it, we're gonna go in at an angle, and then we're gonna line it up to the uh, standoffs. We'll make sure that we get this up to the IO plate as well this little cable out of the way. All right, motherboard is in place. Got it on the standoff so you can see it through the holes here. Got these screws that we're gonna use to mount it to the case. They call it mainboard screws and it comes with a bunch of them. So I'm gonna do the center standoff first. We're gonna do all nine of these screws. Did the center screw, now I'm gonna do the corners and then I'll do the remaining standoffs. Do, 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 do. This is always the fun part, all the screws. Now you don't want to over tighten these screws. You definitely want this secure because this is what's keeping the motherboard on the case, but you don't want to over tighten. You don't want to damage the uh, motherboard. And you certainly do not want to use power tools for this because that will definitely over tighten and damage. Although I'm sure some of you probably do that all the time anyway. So up to you. All right, motherboard is screwed in. We have the IO plate on and it is on correctly. Look at that. There's all of our IO. Awesome. Next up, I want to get our power supply in place. Uh, so this is semi-modular, so that means that we've got our motherboard 24 pin. We've also got our CPU cables here. I'm gonna do these first because I wanna get the CPU power run before I get the cooler in. Uh, that way it'll just be easier to work because the cooler is going to kind of get in the way. It's going to make getting that cable in a little difficult. So this gives me some space so I can just get it in first and then I'm going to put the cooler on after. I'm going to have the fan pointed downward. That's where the intake's going to be for the air. Got the little mesh there. So take this, put it in place. I'm actually going to screw this in now. I want to be tugging on this a little bit, so I'd rather just have it secured. There's going to be four screw holes on the power supply that are going to match up here. So there you go. Power supply is in place, so that's all set. I'm going to turn this guy around. All right, so motherboard cables here, and this one's going to be for the CPU. So we've got two channels here, so we can run cables through. So this will be easy for the SATA data here on the side. And then here's our 24 pin power connector for the motherboard. So I'm gonna run the motherboard cable through here, kind of loop it around and plug it in there. We've got some Velcros here, so this is gonna help the cable management in a bit. So all these pre-run cables, and kind of loosen them up. I promise I'm gonna clean this up later, maybe. So I'm gonna take this, run this through the top channel. Bring 
bring it around here. All right, so you can see we have the motherboard power. This is the connector here. And then this is the cable that's gonna be coming from the power supply. We got this little latch on the side, which is gonna hold it in place. So we wanna make sure that the latch is pointed in this direction. It's gonna latch right onto here. This is kind of a big cable, so you have to wrangle it just a little bit, wrap it around itself. I'll wrap the cable around itself a little bit, line it up. And there we go. Just push that right into place. If you'll click. There we go. So now we got that set. We're ready to move on. Just like that. All set. All right, we got our eight pin. This is gonna be for our CPU. So I'm gonna take this, run this up here. Over. All right, so this is the eight pin connector. This is gonna be the power for the CPU. Now I have my eight pin cable coming from the power supply. It's two little pieces that go together. The latch is gonna to go towards the top. You can do it one piece at a time if you want. I'm gonna to try to do them both together. I got the first half in. Line it up, push it in. Line it up, push it in, and there we go. Now our CPU power is all set and plugged in. All right, and then this right here, this is gonna be for our GPU. Fortunately, our 4060 only takes an eight pin anyway. So that one's all set. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pre-run it for our GPU and I'll use one of these channels on the bottom. I'll have it come from this channel here on the bottom. So when we have this GPU in, it'll be ready to go right in. So plug right in. All right, now we're gonna get the cooler installed. First thing we have to do is put our thermal paste. Now this came with a little packet of thermal compound. I prefer the ones that come in syringes, but this is what came with this deep cool cooler. So this is what we're gonna use. So I've got this little packet right here. I'm gonna kind of mush it down. So the compound is at the bottom. So when I tear this, it doesn't just come off and end up all over my hands. It's gonna rip right there and just like a little ketchup packet, we're just gonna squeeze it right onto our <laughs> CPU. Like it's a bunch of French fries. All right, so we've got this guy. We're gonna go down here. We're just gonna put a nice little dollop, a pea-sized dollop. Thermal paste right in the center. Uh, the CPU is nice and square shaped, so all we really need is just a nice little bit in the middle. This will, once the cooler goes on there, it's gonna spread that evenly across the CPU. So that'll be all set. I'm gonna dispose this thing. I don't know where to put this. This is all sticky. Put it right there. All right. Now, <laughs> most important thing when you're putting your cooler on, please take off this sticker, please. Your CPU will overheat and you'll be wondering why. It's probably because you left the sticker on. So this, it's proof that it's off. You don't want to touch this. Our fingers naturally have oils and stuff and gunk that you, you know, you don't want that cooking in between the CPU and the cooler. The fan is here on this side. We're going to have the air going through the cooler and we're going to have it going out through this fan here. So we want it mounted in this direction. I'm going to untangle cables for the fan quickly because I'm going to route this to the top side. There we go. All right, so here we have our fan power and then this is going to be for the ARGB. So this one's pretty simple. We've got two little mounting screws here and here. We're going to line it up with the two little studs here. These are threaded, so it's going to thread right onto that. Make sure these cables are out of the way. Place this right down. There we go. All right, so I have this lined up on the threaded studs. 
and I'm just going to tighten it down. A couple of turns on one side, then a couple of turns on the other side. So this will evenly apply pressure onto the CPU, and this will help the thermal paste evenly spread as well. Now, you don't want to over tighten this, but you do want to make sure that it's tight enough. Pretty good on there pretty well. Cool, all right. Now we're ready to start running some cables to the motherboard and there's a bunch of them. Oh, this is gonna be fun. All right, so we have the cables for the top here. We're gonna have our USB 3.0 cables that we're gonna run to the motherboard. We have our HD audio. I already threaded this through the hole here. So I'm gonna put this through the top channel here. I'll run that to the front. So this is our USB 3.0. All right, here's the connector on the motherboard for the USB 3.0 for the front panel. This is the cable that is coming from the case. So you can see that there's a little notch here. We're going to match it up to the notch that's right there. Line the cable right up. And there we go. It's going to push it in a little bit. It's going to take a little bit of force, but there we go. All set. Next up is going to be our HD audio. This connector here is going to be our HD audio. You can see there's a missing pin over here on the HD audio cable. There's also a corresponding missing pin, so you just want to line that up and it's going to slide right in. There we go, cable lines up and you just push it right in. You can use one of these little tools sometimes, it'll help push it in, get it in just right so you're not damaging the cables. These are the cables that are coming from the fan on the CPU. So on the top of the motherboard, we have two fan connectors right here. I'm gonna take the cable for the CPU fan and I'm gonna put it into the gray. You wanna match this up to the notch that's on the top. So this one Slides right in, and there we go. That one's all set. Okay, so the fan control I have plugged into the top here, so that's gonna be for the CPU fan. The RGB for the fan, I'm gonna to run to the back, and this is gonna plug into the controller. Now the RGB for the CPU fan, I'm gonna plug into this extra header right here. plugs right in. Now this is an extra pass-through cable. Okay, so I'm gonna loosen these cables up. This is for the controller. So this is a SATA power. So we're gonna get one of the cables connected to the power supply here to that. That's gonna power the controller and then power all the fans. This is gonna be the fan controller, which is gonna to go to the motherboard. And then we have the ARGB five volt header. The headers are on the bottom of the motherboard, so I have to run this down and around. Now I have the ARGB plug from the CPU fan running to the controller. Then the controller is gonna plug straight into the motherboard, so that should control the color for all of the fans simultaneously. So these three pins are gonna be the five volt header for the ARGB, the addressable RGB. Now we have our ARGB cable that also has three holes here on the connector. This is running to the fan controller and it's gonna control the RGB for all of the fans. It's nice when you use a controller because you're just a single cable going to the motherboard instead of multiple cables. That one's an easy one to plug in. Now, the controller for the fans, the fan plug from the controller, I'm actually gonna plug into the top so the connector next to the CPU fan is another fan header. We're gonna use that to plug the controller in. 
This will be for the fan controller. It's just another four pin. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze, but I can get in there. There we go. So that is for our CPU fan, and this is gonna be for the fan controller. So this is gonna control the fan speeds. So everything I need from the semi-modular power supply is already running from it. We have the CPU power, motherboard power, and GPU power. I just need one additional cable, which is gonna be one of these SATA power cables here. So this one's pretty simple. It's gonna reach in, tons of room in here. So I could just plug it into one of the extra PCIe slots there. Take this SATA, I always like saying that, SATA data, SATA data, SATA data, SATA power. Yeah, this is SATA power. So this is the power for the fan controller and this is one of the SATA power connectors running from the power supply. So there's a little L, you just wanna ma match this L up, just like that. And it plugs right in. So I'm gonna take these twisty ties, I'm gonna tie this back up. Attempt to make it look neat. Just keep this tucked away under here for now. All right, now we're on to everybody's favorite part. These are the cables for the power button, the reset button, all of these buttons here on top of the case. And it's all of these little two pin tiny connectors. And this is gonna run to the bottom corner of the motherboard and definitely gonna refer to the manual to plug these in. Usually there's an adapter that's included, so you can plug these into that adapter and then you can plug that adapter straight into the motherboard and it makes it a lot easier. We did not have one of those adapters with this, so we're gonna have to do it the hard way. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna run it up here into the channel. So this header here is going to be for our case cables. This is gonna be for the power switch, the reset switch, and the hard drive light. This comes in a bunch of very small individual cables that you can see here. So for our power LED, we have a plus and a minus. The plus is gonna go on top on this left-hand side, and then the minus is gonna go right underneath. Next up, we have our hard drive light. This is our hard drive LED. The positive should go up and the negative should go down. So you can see how it's indicated on the little label here. So it's gonna go just like that. Next up, we have our reset switch. This is gonna go on the bottom right next to it. And then we have our power switch. This is the last one. This is gonna go on the top. All these tiny little cables connect right here. So you can see this is how it looks out. This is how it looks on the finished product. Always check your manual for the layout of these cables. It can be a pain sometimes, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually very easy. Everything's basically set. I'm gonna take the center Velcro here and just try to bundle this all up a little bit. Cable management is optional. I'll be honest, I do it once in a while, but you know, if the back panel closes, I think it's good enough, to be honest. Obviously you can get trimmers if you wanna make it look pretty and extra cool, but I think for now, this is gonna work for us. It's not enough slack on the CPU power, so I'm gonna let it run across here. Pull this one up a little bit. This is gonna run just fine. So here we have our GPU power cable, which is running here. All right, so I took this, I bundled up some of the cables here. Obviously it's not the prettiest cable management in the world, but it is functional. There's not that many things that we had to plug into the motherboard. This one is relatively simple, especially because we have this controller here that's doing a lot of the work for us. 
So this is the CPU power. I have it running across because there's not enough slack for it to run up and over. So I'll just have that here, there. Everything else is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna put this on. And look at that, it closes. So that means everything fits. We gotta push it a little bit though. A lot of people like doing cable management, but as far as I'm concerned, if it closes, it works. Now we're ready to install our GPU. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the GPU on top of that. First thing we have to do is take off two of these brackets here. Now, this one is only two. Sometimes it's as big as three, which is pretty chunky, but this 4060 is actually a pretty decent size. So I'm gonna take my handy dandy screwdriver. I'm going to remove these two screws here. We wanna remove the one that lines up with this PCIe slot here. So this top one can stay. It's gonna be the second one from the top. A little tight, but I can get it out. One screw, two screws. Take these brackets out. So you're gonna to wanna to save these. I keep it in the motherboard box with all the other miscellaneous things that you don't need. Sometimes you wanna refer back to those things. So keep the motherboard box somewhere safe. So this one's pretty simple. We're just gonna take this, gonna line this up at the back. We're gonna make sure that we line up the feet and we wanna line up the PCIe connector. So you can rest it on just like that, push down. It'll click and you're all set, it's installed. And there we go, slides right in. That one's actually the easiest part. And then we just wanna take our screws and screw this in place. Now this 4060 is small enough, I don't really think you're gonna need a support bracket for this, so. GPU sag is not really something I would worry about with this build. And again, this is a very simple entry level build, but I think this is gonna be a very good mid-range gaming PC. I'm actually kind of looking forward to trying this one out, seeing how it runs. All right, so here's the power. This is the eight pin connector on the GPU. 4060 only has a simple eight pin. So we're gonna take our cable cut from the power supply, match it up, and it's just gonna go right in. So this is actually a six pin and a two pin together, but fits right in, snaps in place, and you're all set. I think I'm gonna to wanna to rerun this to this other channel. I think it might look neater, but for now I'm gonna leave it as is because I want to check to see if this posts and we're gonna get the operating system on there. When I get to this point, I always wanna make sure that the PC posts and that everything works, check the BIOS, then we're gonna go and put Windows on it. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do some cleaning, make it look a little bit neater. But I think for now, this is good. This front panel on. Slide right into place. Got our thumb screws. Nice and tight. And there we go, we got a PC. Not bad. This one didn't take me very long either. This was a very quick and easy build. Like I said, we'll clean this up in a minute, but for now, let's just make sure that this guy posts. I'm gonna go grab a monitor, keyboard, a couple other things, and we'll get this guy up and running. Go into the HDMI and the 4060. And we got the power cable that came with the PSU, so I'll use this one. I'm always weird about, I wanna use the cables that it came with. I know I have a million cables exactly like this, but I just like using the one that it came with. They're buddies, right? They wanna to be together. Cool, plugged in. Most important thing, when you are turning on your PC for the first time, please make sure you turn this little switch on, just like that. Okay, so we've got some RGB on the board showing up, so that's good. Some power going to it. You're gonna hit the power switch and here's the moment of truth. Ooh, 
fans are on, lights are up, everything's synced. Red light, white light, yellow light. All right, I think we're posting. Green light, we are good. Let's see. This is the part that always gets me. The monitor's off. Mm. Hey yo, look at that. All right. You see this screen? That's a very good thing. That means we did it right and things are running. So there is our Ryzen 5 5600X3D running at 3300 megahertz or 3.3 gigahertz. We've got our 16 gigs of RAM showing up. Uh, Okie dokie, new CPU installed. Press F1 and let's get into it. Look at that. So we've got our BIOS menu, so everything's set up here. Now we can make any changes that we want here, but for now I just want to make sure that everything's up and running. It looks like we are good. So let's get Windows on this guy. All right, got our handy dandy Windows USB stick. And we've got our Windows 11 product key. Oh, uh, no, nice try. We've got our product key right here. So. And save and exit. Now, obviously, we're going to walk you through what the BIOS is and what these menus do and what they all mean, but that's going to be a separate video, I think, for now. You can see that that's the BIOS menu. I'm going to plug this into the back. I like plugging it straight into the motherboard in the I.O. And uh, just going to reset it. All right, there we go. So I actually didn't have to do anything. All I did was take the USB key for Windows 11, plug it straight into the motherboard. I hit the reset button and just let it run. And here we go, we got the Windows installer coming right up. Now this one's pretty straightforward. You just follow the prompts. Install your operating system and you're all set. And there we go, now we're installing Windows. So that's pretty simple. So that is the process of building a sub $1,000 gaming PC. All in all, it's pretty simple. And what I like about this build is it gives you a lot of leeway to upgrade down the line. Now, obviously the AM4 socket, there's not gonna be that many more CPUs for that available. You can upgrade to maybe a 5800X3D if you want to down the line. Uh, but for the most part, you're pretty much capped out on the AM4 line since AMD is on AM5. But there are other things that you can do with this build. On the motherboard, if you want to put another M2 SSD, you also have the slots on the back. If you want to put any 2.5 inch SSDs, you can also put another 3.5 inch old school hard drive as well. So you can put a lot of space in this guy, which is great if you want to put a lot of your games and keep them installed at all times. Like I said, this is going to be a very good budget gaming PC. I think you can also use this for other things. You can do some moderate content creation and editing, especially if you do any streaming or capture card kind of stuff, you can do that on here as well. This is gonna be a pretty sweet PC. We're gonna take it for a test drive in just a little bit. All right, so I let this run overnight. I had to get it set up, get all the Windows updates, drivers updates, get all of my games and programs installed. So this guy's up and running and all set. The last thing that we have to do is my favorite part. I'm gonna take this off. Look at that, it's beautiful. I'm really happy with the way this build came out. This is a nice airy case too, so it's gonna keep the components nice and cool. So I paired this off with the HyperX Armada 25. This is a 24.5 inch 1080p display. It has a 240 hertz refresh rate, which is really good, especially if you like competitive shooters, any FPS kind of game, high refresh rate monitors are the way to go. I really like this monitor a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this for a test drive. We're going to try a couple of different games at 1080, see how they perform with this configuration. I think they're going to do pretty well. So let's check it out. I have MSI Afterburner on this screen here. We're going to keep track of our frame rates, kind of look at some of our other, got our temperatures up, everything else. 
Okay, video settings, we've got 1920 by 1080 at 240 frames. We're on DirectX 12. Everything is set to high for the most part, epic and high. We're hovering in the 90s, hitting the hundreds a little bit. All in all, frame rate's pretty good. I actually don't play with the shadows on Epic like this. It's actually a little bit distracting. I actually play with a turn down. So it makes it hard when you're going from these dark environments to these light environments like this, especially for, you know, Battle Royale. But all in all, you know, performance is there. You get a lot of quality, you're getting a lot of frames. I'm actually gonna try turning down the shadows a little bit. Everything's on Epic, I'm gonna try high. This is what I'm more accustomed to playing. So the shadows are very distracting. Now we are way up in frame rate, 187, 169. So now we're really putting that, uh, we're really putting this 240 hertz monitor to work. 1080, I like gaming at 1080. This monitor is, I think, 24 inches. So 24 inches of 1080, that's about the max of what you'd want. Anything beyond that, you're definitely going to be hitting 1440 territory. In the 120s right now. Excuse me, sir. Do you want to shop at Micro Center? All right, now we're on to another favorite of mine. This is Valheim, which is one of my favorite games of all time. I have all the settings set to high, everything kind of left on. And I left my character up in the mountains here. But in terms of frame rate, even with all the snow. It's looking pretty good. 180 frames. Okay, so this went down to like the 120s because you're fighting this golem here. Clearly I cannot parry. There we go. Excuse me, sir, would you like to learn about our Micro Center bundle? Even through that encounter, the frame rate only got as low as the 120s, which <laughs> that is very good. I want to see what happens when I go to my home base because that's where the frame rate tanks in this game and that's kind of a good test of the system. Obviously it's the game just not being optimized that well but still it's nice to see how it performs. All right moment of truth let's go to the home base see what our frame rate looks like. Definitely went down but we're only in the 120s. Walk by all these portals. Oh, we're holding up, 130s. Come down here, especially when you have the fire on, sometimes you'll get some frame dips, but you know, 105, 115, in the 120s, teens, it's not bad. Very smooth experience. CPU temp is good too, we're only at 55. And the GPU temp is still good, 56. This is a very airy case too, so I don't see these components getting that hot. This deep cool cooler, it's definitely keeping the 5600X 3D nice and cool. And this is a more CPU intensive game, so CPU is handling it just fine. All right, let's try something else. All right, we've got Cyberpunk loaded up and I might have just missed it, but the loading times on this, super quick. That M2 NVMe is definitely paying off. All right, so let's take a look at our settings. Graphics, ray tracing, set to low. I do have DLSS on. Uh, a majority of our settings are high. Some of them set to ultra. They're all ultra and high. We are running this at 1080. Let's check that frame rate. All right, we're in the 120s right now. Just kind of walking around the city. This always is a gorgeous game. 
at all that. Yeah, the 150s. And paired with this 1080 monitor, I mean, this is a perfect combo. 1440, I think you can get away with, but, you know, for being a budget build, under $1,000 for the PC, and then you throw in, you know, this HyperX 1080 monitor is, I believe, $139.99. You know, so that combination, I mean, this is a pretty good setup. We're in the 118, 119, so it's really hovering in about the teens to like 120 range in terms of frame rate. Now, obviously, this is just me walking around the city, so let's see what happens if I engage these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 130s. Excuse me, sir. Would you like to hear about our bundle at Micro Center? We have a Micro Center bundle, sir. I'm just trying to save you money. You can get the 5600X3D with 16 gigs of RAM and a motherboard. Are you interested? I take it from your hostility, you are not interested. Frame rate's solid, though. This whole encounter, it's been in the 130s. All right, go to bed. Good night. But again, I mean, graphical fidelity is there, performance is there, CPU temp 58, GPU temp 56, you know, this is a very nice cool case, the components are going to stay cool, this cooler is keeping it up with the 5600X 3D just fine, I keep getting hit by cars. But there you have it, I think this is a solid mid-range budget gaming PC. I mean, anything you throw at this, especially at 1080, I think it's going to perform just fine. We tried a couple of different games here, but it's doing great. I would take this home with me if I could. So we're all wrapped up with this build. I hope you learned something today. If you like the components that were featured in this video, make sure to check the description. All of the links to the products shown in this video will be listed below. And remember, if you like our videos, like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to have a lot more build videos to come. And if you made it this far in the video, make sure you comment hashtag I want a micro center near me.